opportunity to arrive in such style, but there again it's befitting of the type of motorcycles that we've got to test for you. The CBR 900 Fireblade and the GSXR 1100 Suzuki, one of my all-time favourite motorbikes. We're going to see how they compare in some very illustrious motorcycle company over the next few minutes. Stay with us. To highlight the merits of both bikes, we'll be on the strip with Steve Burns and Steve Sykes checking the manufacturer's performance claims on our own dyno, letting Jamie Whitham loose at Cadwell Park with a new angle on bike camera giving tyre manufacturers the world over the occasional damp pass. And finally, how all this relates to the bikes on the road. The Suzuki GSX-R1100 has been a market leader in its class for over five years now, but lately the so-called experts have labelled this bike as out of date and a bit of a dinosaur. Conversely, the all-new Honda CBR900R Fireblade is hailed by those same experts to be the bike of the moment. We decided to take a close look at the merits of both bikes in our own independent series of tests. The object of our road riding test was to try both bikes in the environment they were totally designed for. There's nothing quite like an English country lane, sunny weather and two of the best big bikes to ride. Overall, the basics of a GSX-R1100 Suzuki haven't changed much over the years. Despite a few cosmetic changes here and there, and an annual uprating of various items such as suspension and carburation, the overall package is still not that far removed from the original bike. Having said that, one area says we could keep trying to improve on the 1100 with the suspension. You'd need to be pretty cute though to apply all the combinations now available on this bike. 41mm upside down fork with variable preload, variable rebound and compression damping combined with Suzuki's own rising rate full float and monoshock system at the rear. This is also adjustable for preload and compression damping. With all those modifications I was expecting a completely different bike to the one I first rode back in 1986. But riding a GSX-R hasn't changed that much. It's still big, it's still very powerful and it still gets in a knock through bumpy corners. So let's have a look at that again in slow motion. And despite what it looked like, I can tell you it didn't feel anywhere near as bad. I personally like the heavy feel of the bike combined with the slightly soft suspension, even though, given all those adjustment settings, I still couldn't get it to do exactly what I wanted it to. Biggest drawback for me was the tendency for bodywork to touch the ground through bumpy corners, but you had to be in a real hurry to make it do that. The fairing and mirrors were very good, but the best feature was not having to keep using the gearbox. The five gears worked really well with the tremendous all-round power of the motor. By contrast to the GSX-R, the Honda CBR900R Fireblade is quite advanced. The engine is remarkably light in weight and compact in size and doesn't produce anywhere near the raw power of the Suzuki. But there again, it doesn't have to. The suspension and riding position almost encourage you to try out areas in road riding that good sense has previously denied you. The bike is absolutely brilliant on all road surfaces, although bikes set this way do tend to toss the rider around in the seat on bumpy roads, and the Fireblade is no exception. The whole package feels as if it has benefited from race technology. Particular points I liked with the Fireblade was the speed at which you could change direction in a corner and the outstanding brakes. Our test bike's worst feature though was its gear shift. It was very easy to miss any of the six gears. But of course a very important part of any road game motorcycle is the comfort of the pillion passenger. The Honda looks absolutely outrageous but uh, we've brought in Rachel to give us some views on her testing of this. Rachel, which one compares the best? Well, I think the Suzuki. Um, at first look, the Honda looked uncomfortable and after 300 miles it proved it. Um, Suzuki, um, it's got a bigger base, so you're more comfortable. Got more room to sit on, it's better padded as well. 
So you like the mileage on a GSXR, but pose value, it's the Fireblade. If you put it that way, yeah, I suppose so. Well, despite the obvious technological differences of the two bikes, as far as road riding goes, I personally liked each bike for different reasons. I think I'll sit on the fence though regarding my favourite. We went to Cadwell Park Race Circuit near Louth in Lincolnshire and teamed up with one of Britain's fastest big bike riders, Jamie Whitham. How about this for a different angle on things, demonstrating just how hard the suspension of a GSXR 1100 Suzuki has to work, even on the comparatively smooth Cadwell Park surface. Third gear then, out of Charlie's corner and onto the fastest part of the course and up to fifth and 150 mile an hour. Watch the tyre flatten out in the dip of the straight, there it goes. Up the hill then towards Park Corner. Back to second gear for Park. Banking it right. Accelerating up to third gear and 110 miles an hour through the long, long right-hander and on towards the gooseneck, which is a second gear right-left flick. Coming into the right-hand part of it now. Picks the bike up, throws it left. And down the hill we go to Mansfield Corner, which is another second gear turn. Through the left-hander of Mansfield and along the short straight to the first gear hairpin. Jamie then demonstrating just how hard it is to stop 554 pounds of bike from 120 miles an hour in a big hurry for the hairpin. Let's take another look at that in slow motion. Well, they don't come much more wiggly than that, do they, Jamie? So then, Master James returns to the pit lane with the Suzuki still in one piece after some fairly outrageous riding indeed. And uh, of course, what we all want to know is what his impressions were of that bike. Right, um, first impressions of the GSXR 1100. As you'd expect, the bike has bags of grunt. Um, the bike will pull from almost any revs in almost any gear. Um, it was very easy to get the back end um, spinning coming out of the hairpin or almost any slow corner um, this is partly due to the fact it has um, lots of power uh, and partly due to the fact that um, the bike's obviously uh, quite heavy being a big bike so it takes a lot of uh, getting moving um, the bike steered fairly well the brakes actually were excellent the, the actual stopping power of, of disc on pad, of pad on disc was uh, very good but the bike didn't pull up as good as maybe a smaller bike because um, of obviously the weight of the machine. Uh, it changed direction fairly well for a big bike. Um, also steered pretty good. Um, and if anything, uh, the, the suspension on this was slightly better than the Honda uh, as regards riding the bumps because it's obviously set up probably slightly more for the road. It's slightly softer uh, and gives it a probably slightly better ride but not just as sporty. Um, the gearbox was absolutely excellent, uh, as with all Suzuki's, you can't fault the gearbox. Uh, but apart from that, um, quite good, quite impressive, a lot of grunt. He's just so cool, isn't he, our James? So let's have a look then what he made of the Fireblaze track performance. We're on board now, coming into the gooseneck S's, 
He's got six gears to play with on the Honda as opposed to the slightly wider space five on the Suzuki. So then, down the drop to Mansfield corner, back to second gear on the Honda as well, throws it on the side, past the club circuit start line here at Cadwell and onto the brake testing hairpin. Hard on the brakes, a very slow corner with a drop in the surface. Jamie at play, but demonstrating what a very light bike at 408 pounds this is. Up to fourth gear through the left kink and approaching Charlie's. Charlie's corner is a right-hander, very difficult right-hander, leading onto the back straight in third gear. The Honda really squirmed here, probably more due to just how hard Mr. Whitman was pushing it with the rear tyre spinning. Let's have another look at that in slow motion. Hard on the power, third gear, gets the rear wheel spinning, the suspension sits down, but as you can see from our on-bike camera, the Honda is extremely stable everywhere else, bearing in mind it is being absolutely nailed by one of the world's best superbike riders. Jamie back in the pits, that's two out of two he's managed to return to us, which is a bit of a surprise after seeing the way he was riding around on that. But what were his impressions, of course, with the Honda after what was a very fast ride? Well, um, I've just got back from my first ride on the Honda 900 Fireblade. Um, the first impressions are very impressive. Um, the brakes were good, um, very responsive, very a lot of feel with them. Uh, the bike felt small and light, uh, easy to move around, very flickable, and also very stable in the corners. There's no real big sharp bumps here at Cadwell, uh, but everything that Cadwell has got, it um, you know handled it very uh, very well. Um, if I had any criticism at all, it would be the gearbox, uh, quite clunky and easy to miss gears. Uh, really, uh, you've got to be quite careful about putting it putting it into gear uh, apart from that it's quite uh, quite a good spread of power um, although it hasn't got the grunt of say a thousand or eleven hundred so the gears tend to be closer together but still no problem it still pulls from from quite low revs very smooth and uh, altogether an exceptionally nice bike to ride so then having checked the riders opinions of how these bikes feel on road and track we get down to the nitty gritty of overall performance and of course just how the manufacturer's figures stack up against a test in the real world. The Dynajet rolling road is now recognised as about the best way to check things out in as near to road conditions as you can get. Preparations are made, the bike is strapped down at the front, instrumentation is connected up to the computer and our dyno technicians prepare themselves to give this bike the biggest thrashing it's ever had stood in one place. So then, there's the graph that we've got to look at. The GSX-R 1100 will be the blue line, the CBR 900RR will be the yellow line, and this is great horsepower, remember, a comparison of the two, and the GSX-R peaks out at 130 bhp, a massive 130, compared with the CBR's 120, slightly more conservative, but of course that bike is much, much lighter. Well, while the tests continue on this Honda, let's go through the bike's basic makeup. It's a 16-valve liquid-cooled inline four-cylinder bike and has an actual capacity of just 893 cc's. It has an 11 to 1 compression ratio and is fed by four 38mm flat-slide constant-velocity carburetors. The gearbox is six-speed, 
and the final drive to the 17 inch rear wheel is by chain only problem we had here in the dyno room testing the Honda Fireblade was the fact that due to the very complicated aerodynamics of the bike, in other words the ducting really does cool the bike very well in motion, was it got just a little bit hot during the work and you can hear it just backfiring through the exhaust system, but on the road no problems with cooling there. So then, conclusive proof on the dyno that the Fireblade has an excellent power to weight ratio to help its already excellent road holding characteristics. Something else that should be considered is that this bike drops below the 900cc super expensive insurance bracket. That's just in case you should fall off your home dyno. Next up then for the treatment is Suzuki's GSX-R1100. Well, Jamie Whitten said it had loads of grunt, now we'll see just how much. While well, the rear tyre begs for mercy, let's go through this bike's physical attributes. It's a 16 valve, oil cooled, double overhead cam in line 4, and has an actual capacity of 1127cc. It has 10 to 1 compression ratio and is fed by four 40mm Mikuni constant velocity carburettors. The gearbox is only 5 speed with a final drive to the 17 inch rear wheel by chain. Curiously and in keeping with many older style bikes the rev counter was found to be massively inaccurate on top revs on this bike. We had absolutely no trouble with the calling of the Suzuki, we got enough air to it and it chucked out massive horsepower. Here then is a comparison of the gears. Through the gears then with both motorcycles you can see there the Suzuki making miles more horsepower than the Honda all the way through the gearbox, right the way through the fifth for the Suzuki and sixth for the actual Honda. Now we check just how all that power can be applied in a straight line. The combination is Steve Burns, Steve Sykes and a warm and sunny Santa Pod drag strip in Bedfordshire. Despite the odd painter wandering around in the background preparing the trackside for the next big race, we had the full and official timing facilities at our disposal. Sykes then making sure that he gets the Honda's tyres to good working temperature for his first run on the Honda up the quarter mile. He looks like he's rearing to get down to business. Quick check on the grip there from the Fireblade. So Steve Sykes inches up to the starting line and waits for the lights. They will go amber, descending down to green in just a moment. Steve Sykes then, doing very well to keep the front wheel on the ground and blasts off for his quarter mile time. And an even bigger burnout from Steve Burns on the GSX-R1100. Well, certainly very, very keen to get a fast time in on that big bike. Great things were expected from this bike after our dyno test figures and both Sykes and Burns played with tyre pressures and suspension settings to get the best from the Honda and the Suzuki. So then, Burns having made his final preparations, inches up to the line, positions himself perfectly for a quick run and waits for the starting lights. Blast off then on the 1100 and Burns moving over to the left hand side while someone must have offered him a pint. Hundred and twenty seven mile an hour terminal speed, Sykes looking really mean for his second run on the Honda, lines himself up for a quick time. And again does really very, very well to keep the front end on the ground and that's quite difficult with that Honda. Burns then, checking his grip on the Suzuki. Can he improve on his time? Makes his way to the line for another quarter mile time. So another quarter mile underway. And just what did he make of the Suzuki? It behaves perfect. It accelerates without twitching to one side. It stops in a straight line. I think that's 
partly due to its weight over the Honda and it doesn't misbehave one little bit. It's a good, well proven quarter mile street machine. Steve Burns then is impressed with the Suzuki, but Steve Sykes shows us how it's done on his super street class GSXR 1100 lookalike. But what did he think to the Honda? The Honda, whilst being harder to launch, once underway is almost a match of the Suzuki, despite its small CCs. This is probably due to its much lighter weight. And confirmation of that really came over the eighth of a mile distance where the GSX-R Suzuki was running in the six seconds with a terminal of 106 miles an hour and the CBR was in the seven seconds over the eighth of a mile with a 104 mile an hour terminal. But over the quarter mile, the CBR took a little coaxing to get into the 10 second bracket, but the Suzuki was there doing it all day long. There are the quarter mile times. They are the best times that both bikes were able to manage today at Santa Pod in Bedfordshire with good conditions. So after all our tests and deliberations, what were the points that stood out most with these two superb superbikes? On the road, it's probably down to what a rider wants from a bike. The Honda is very much a race bike designed for the road, and it really shows. Superb handling, backed up with great brakes. The only real problems we found with this bike were the unfriendly gear shift, and that the bike just encourages the rider to explore limits never considered before. The instrument panel looks very much like a race bike and the seat leaves a little to be desired for passengers. Interesting though to see some bodywork details very much from the racetrack in the aerodynamic department. But in the end it's all down to the riding. The Suzuki, well, you can see the size of the steering damper and I found out why you need it. The bike is heavy and does wiggle, but has a great relationship between its enormous power and its well-spread five-speed gearbox. It also has a good fairing and pillion seat for high-speed work on the road. Something that both bike manufacturers still need to address, though, is security. We kept our test bikes under lock and key with an Abus granite system. On the racetrack, Jamie Whitten did a great job and liked both bikes for different reasons. Very much a similar story, I have to say, to the road test. The Suzuki for its grunt and surprisingly for its soft suspension, something that may not have been so comfortable on a bumpier track. The gearbox also came in for praise, Tyres worked very well and there was some minor road contact with the fairing. The Honda really got some stick. With its less powerful engine but superior weight and handling, Jamie enjoyed shattering the myth that you can't touch down a fire blade while destroying a set of tyres into the bargain. He also tried to make sure he got exclusive use of Cadwell Park by frightening everybody else on the track. On the dyno, no big shocks here except perhaps that Honda have kept their power output to a sensible level and that the Suzuki had such a large inaccuracy in the rev counter. For those of you that like a little mathematics, the equation goes Honda CBR 900R Fireblade weighs 408 pounds and gives 120 brake horsepower. For the Suzuki GSXR 1100, that bike weighs 554 pounds and gives a massive 130 brake horsepower. On the drag strip, and as expected by our riders, it was the GSXR 1100 that was the master. Steve Burns set a brilliant 10.71 second run at 127 odd mile an hour terminal speed. But after a little adjustment and a lot of concentration by both Sykes and Burns, the Honda's great power to weight ratio meant that it wasn't that far behind and in the end ended up setting a very, very credible 10.96 seconds with 125 mile an hour terminal speed. Both these times are among the fastest officially recorded times for either bike in the world. But on the road, of course, the choice is entirely up to you.
I would say that the Honda, whilst being harder to launch, once underway, is almost the match of this is <laughs> Hang on a minute, let's just run. Hold it, hold it, hold it. What do you think? Right, right. Coming up in our next video production and available shortly is a car V bike extravaganza. We're pitching the Brody Britain Racing Sapphire Cosworth against the awe inspiring Steve Burns Monster Bike. The Ford gives over 400 brake horsepower and the bike gives over 200 brake horsepower. This video also includes comprehensive behind the scenes preparation. Place your bets and your orders now for a cracking showdown.